Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. This is the Beretta BRX1 in 6.5 Creedmoor. You can load the magazine in or out of the gun, either left-handed or right-handed. And in operation, it's a straight cut bolt. Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. This is a Beretta BRX 1 in 6.5 Creedmoor. Now this rifle has been quite a while coming to me, but I've got it now, been shooting with it, quite happy with it actually. Um, this is the Creedmoor, as I said, it's also available in 308, 306 and 300 Win Mag. And this one is a 560mm 22 inch barrel. Um, overall length of the rifle is 1095mm, which is 43 and a quarter inches. Overall weight is 3,445 grams, which is seven pounds, 10 ounces. Length of pull is 369 millimeters or 14 and a half inches. The barrel is cold hammer forged. It's 16 millimeters in diameter and it's threaded 14 by one at the muzzle for a moderator or break. The magazine, which is very nicely orange actually, um, I'll bring that up in a second, it's a five plus one and it's got twin latches on the base to get it in and out of the rifle and it clips in securely. I love the fact it's orange because how many times have you put a magazine down and I must admit I leave them in rifles so I can't lose them but I have to say having it orange is actually surprisingly useful because it does make it easier to dig out of a pocket especially in poor light conditions and you're less likely to lose a detachable magazine. This of course is a very interesting rifle because it's a straight pull. It's the first one really we've seen from Beretta as a sporting rifle. The rifle itself, it looks very similar to a Blaza, but it is fundamentally, mechanically incredibly different. It's, it's really nothing like a Blaza other than visually. Um, just to look at it, you've got an eight lug bolt. It's a 16 lug bolt in the larger Magnum calibers, but the eight lug bolt basically runs in a carrier and it's a little bit more similar to an AR-15 type arrangement because the bolt goes in and then rotates into battery to lock into the abutments, which are part of the hammer forged barrel. So when you close the bolt, it goes forward and inside, you can't see it, but that bolt head rotates and clicks into position. Now if I open it back up again, the bolt removes, there's a catch on the side here and you can take the bolt out completely like that and you can see the bolt head there. So we've got an extractor and plunger ejector. This all works harmoniously and on the side here you can see the bolt release catch. Now there's a little bit of a knack to getting the bolt in and out of the rifle, but you do get used to it. And once you've done it, you learn it. It's like any rifle, it's a different operating system. It takes a little while to get hold of. One of the visual signatures of this rifle is it looks like this safety catch is similar to a decocker, but it's not. It is just a safety catch. So forward for fire, drop it for safe, and then there's a middle position for safe bolt opening. Now, one of the reasons it's not a decocker is if I just take this bolt out, I can show you, and I'll just let this go forward slowly. You might just be able to see there, there is actually a mechanical hammer within the gun so it's not like a spring striker assembly like most modern rifles have this does actually still have that hammer 
which fix up when it fires. Um, pop that back down there. While we're actually in here, I'll show you this. I'm not gonna dismantle this on camera because YouTube don't like that, but there's basically a clip there which allows you to put a screwdriver under it. Just lift that clip and that will allow the trigger guard to drop out with all the trigger mechanism. The trigger is three stage weight adjustable and the little catch on there, you need to take that out to adjust those three stages. It's not actually difficult once you've figured out how to do it. I'll just pop this back in the gun, as I say. It does take a little bit of a knack just to get used to doing this. But once you've done it a couple of times, it's fine. Uh, it's a polymer stock, the barrel is fully free floating. And one thing I will say is it's a very slim polymer stock, but it's incredibly stiff and there's no intermittent barrel contact whatsoever. There is an aluminium bedding block in here, which I'll show you on a photograph. And on the underside, you can see there are two captive screws here, which allow you to totally release the barrel, the scope and the Picatinny rail here from the rifle stock. So you can swap barrel calibers. You can also swap the bolt heads, you can also swap the magazines to make sure that they are calibre appropriate and the rifle can also be switched left and right handed. It can be set up as right handed but it's apparently a 30 second job to switch it to left handed and this is all fully covered in the online instructions. There's no actual instruction but with the rifle it comes with a QR code for that big instruction manual online. It does come with safety warnings and things like that though. Just popping that close. Now I've weighed the three stages on this trigger at 549, 858 and 1249 grams, which is one pound three ounces, one pound 14 ounces and two pound 12 ounces. The brake is actually quite crisp and I'm very happy using it. Looking elsewhere on the polymer stock, you've got a recoil pad here. I believe there's a spacer system I can see in place there so you can change the length of pull. It is quite generous at 14 and a half inches to start with and I found the rifle very comfortable because of that. The texture of the stock is quite coarse so it's easily gripped and it's not gonna be too slippery when it's damp. Position on the rifle is excellent. The cheek piece is quite slim. This scope that was supplied with the guns in slightly unusually high scope mounts. Now we'll probably put slightly lower mounts on if it were my rifle, but the bolt stroke is 125 millimeters. And it does clear your nose, just depending quite exactly on the way your head position is on the rifle. You can see from the targets I shot, um, it beats the MOA requirement. Um, that My targets were shot at 100 meters, and I believe off the top of my head, they're about 20 and a half millimeters for both 140 grain ELDM match ammunition and 143 grain ELDX expanding ammunition for hunting. So there's no problem with the barrel, the consistency, and the bedding system is very good because that aluminum bedding block means there's no stress exhibited anywhere in the barrel stock arrangement, and you can rely on this gun. I have actually dismantled it, put it back together, and there is no loss of zero and of course having a Picatinny rail on here makes scope mounting very simple. I think it's quite a bold step from Beretta to go straight into a straight pull rifle like this. 
I was pleasantly surprised by it because to be honest I wasn't sure what it would be like and I think there was a lot of misinformation went around about them but actually it works well and it is accurate and I am particularly impressed by the barrel bedding system you know the action bedding system and the barrel quality itself because it does appear to be incredibly thermally stable I shot quite a lot through the rifle and I didn't really experience any kind of wandering zero which would have affected a hunting scenario okay it's not a precision rifle but it's not designed to be a precision rifle it's a hunting rifle and i think that is the key to it and like any stroke pull when you are in the heat of action you've got very very quick reload with minimal movement on the gun and you certainly don't have to disturb the gun lifting a bolt and with it not having a thumb hole i'll go back to this again I'm not personally a fan of thumb hole stocks on straight pull rifles. This doesn't have one, so I like that. Because your hand is straight to that bolt, and you don't have to actually withdraw it out of the thumb hole and go back to the rifle. The forend's got nice finger grooves on it, so it's good for grip. And yes, although slim, it is stiff, as I said, but your hands don't touch the barrel, and it's actually very, very capable and handy in use. The rifle is actually very pointable. And as I've already said, this is in slightly large scope mounts because the scope that's been put on it was the one that's on review for another reason. There's a sling stud on the forend, so you can shoot it from a bipod, no problem. There's another sling stud at the rear, so you've got no problem with a sling either. It's all very stable, and I'm really actually quite happy with it. It's a very comfortable rifle to shoot. There's no particular resonance problem with the stock, and recoil, although it's a small cartridge, the 6.5 Creedmoor, it's very linear, and there's no real muzzle jump to it. I did shoot it with a moderator on, but again, the handling character of the rifle was impressive. I did actually quite like it. I'm not saying you've got to treat it mean to keep it keen, but I would say as an overall handling characteristics, don't be too delicate with it. Make sure when you close the bolt, you close it firmly. And when you open the bolt, don't try and do it slowly. Don't try and do it gently. Just pull it, grip it and rip it. It's designed primarily for driven hunting and speed shooting where you're not really going to be in a kind of slow moving scenario. Now you can close the rifle slowly like that and it will chamber correctly and it will cock correctly. You won't have any problems with that issue. But as I say, when you get through to actually reloading, make it snap, make it sharp, make it snappy and you won't have any issues. I hope you've enjoyed that review. Please like, subscribe, comment. Your comments drive the show, remember, and click the notification bell so you can see the regular upload. Please work through to the end of the video and you can see the show sponsors, both Military First and the British Shooting Show, who pay for this channel for you guys. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.